When International Submarine Engineering's supplier closed, the company lost access to the company's overseas titanium forging facility that used to produce parts for the company's Arctic Explorer autonomous underwater vehicle. I mean, the old facility had even manufactured propellant tanks for the Russian space program. So, you know, they were pretty qualified. Before it settled on a new vendor to make a titanium variable ballast tank for its AUV, the company heard about Siaki a metal 3D printing company that, about two years ago, used its electron beam additive manufacturing technology to 3D print titanium propellant tanks for Lockheed Martin space systems. The electron beam manufacturing technique is a deposition process that can make parts from 8 inches to 19 feet in length, printing up to 20 pounds of metal per hour. The titanium tank is a subsystem of ISC's Arctic Explorer. The company already built two of them for Canadian agencies, they use them to map the seafloor underneath the Arctic ice shelf. The explorers are nearly 23 feet long and weigh more than 4,400 pounds. It uses this unique VB system to be able to park on the seafloor or hold itself on the underside of the ice during missions. Well, the move worked out for ISC as the company cut production time in half from 16 weeks to eight weeks and it reduced overall costs when you compare it to the retooling of a new forging supplier. The new 3D printed tank is set to be installed on board a new Arctic Explorer AUV that is headed to the University of Tasmania in the spring of 2017, which, after extensive trials and training operations, plans to deploy it in Antarctica. It is going where it's cold. Who's, who is volunteering for that mission? No one. That is the old Johnny Shortstraw. Ah! Now something to wet your pants. Using plastic, carbon-dipped paper, and a little bit of sunlight, researchers from the University of Buffalo have created an inexpensive way to turn salt water and contaminated water into potable water for personal use. The team's spin on the solar still could address global drinking water shortages, especially in developing areas and regions affected by natural disasters. They call it the solar vapor generator, and it uses heat converted from sunlight to clean or desalinate the water. The process is actually pretty simple. The sun evaporates the water, leaving behind salt and bacteria. The water vapor is collected, cooled, and returned to a liquid state in a separate container. The solar vapor generator is about the size of a mini fridge, which kind of works, I guess, as a unit of measurement if you work in a college. And it's made of polystyrene foam, which also doubles as a flotation device, as well as porous paper coated in carbon black. The paper absorbs water, the carbon black absorbs sunlight, and it transforms the solar energy into heat used during evaporation. The design is an improvement on other solar stills, which typically produce one to five liters of water per day in the same footprint. This design yields three to 10 liters a day. The much more efficient design could make the difference in a user's quality of life, or even be the difference between life and death. I mean, depending on how dire the circumstances. Either way, they'll have drinking water, and that's good. Drinking water, good. Living, good. So I guess overall the design is good. Now something to wet your pants. Yesterday, video leaked of Boston Dynamics' latest project, an upright robot that stands on two wheels. They call it Handle. Well, they actually call it a bit more than that, as during the presentation in the leaked footage, company founder Mike Rabert called it a nightmare-inducing robot. And after watching the video, I really couldn't agree more. Building off previous work such as Spot Mini, that's a small dog that can clean your house, and Atlas, the humanoid robot that walks off the assembly line and is capable of performing simple tasks and navigating terrain, Handle is the company's latest experiment that combines wheels with legs. According to Raybert, Handle is a self-balancing robot that is more efficient than a legged robot and capable of carrying a reasonably heavy load. Though, nothing really specific on what's reasonably heavy. I mean, when I'm moving stuff around the house, there's a lot of reasonably heavy stuff that I need to get to the kitchen on my own, and it is just not feasible. The Handle has less degrees of freedom than Atlas, but it could serve as a less expensive option. The new robot actually got its name because eventually it's meant to handle objects. You know, just really inventive guys. Atlas, Spot Mini, Handle. Handle, great. Compared to the Atlas, Handle actually seems much quicker and agile. 
as they proved with footage of it actually leaping over an obstacle. Like, play that again, just leaping over an obstacle. Actually, I wonder if Handel is nightmare inducing because it so closely resembles those aliens from the three star classic Dreamcatcher. Yeah, terrifying, or at least spooky, or at least, you know, long enough to keep you from dying of boredom while you watch it. The movie, not the robot. That is interesting. I'll watch that clip all day. All day. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design. Oh, skipping words, making them up.